there. You got some room. Thank uh, you. Uh, well, Willard is is really one of Hello. the. Yeah. Willard really is one of the visionaries of the um, of the music business, uh, and uh, streaming, of course, has gone through uh, some real transformation in the last few years, from being uh, the bete noir of the labels to now uh, perceived more and more as a savior uh, of the labels. Uh, I, and I wanted to talk to you about that um, to start off because it's been a very long, hard road from 1999, kind of the peak of music industry sales globally, uh, to now. Can you tell me why the industry has suffered so much over the years? You know, uh, uh, my view is, and I think that is quite a common view, that the music industry was not structured to take care and go into the digital age. And there was a number of uh, uh, big problems in that. Uh, number one, I would like to say that the pipes were broken globally. Today, a song is uh, four billion microtransactions for one song. And, uh, four billion microtransactions four billion for one song. For one yeah. song. Right. And uh, the pipes were broken for that structure. Number two, there was definitely an agency problem, a principal agency problem that uh, if you don't have transparency and your interest is not aligned, the global digital industry needs transparency to drive what we want to drive. And the third thing, which I think is very common for many industries, is also a very short-term mentality. You know, people uh, think about short-term results, maybe a lack of vision for what technology and digital could give people. And uh, it's fair to say that it was limited tech investments at all right. to take care of what was necessary to do in the opportunity we saw. Right. Well, so you mentioned a lack of transparency. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked that you said you're sort of suggesting by implication that the labels might have a lack of transparency. But this is kind of where Cobalt uh, yeah. comes in, right? What are you guys doing to, to help? I'm, you know, I had three different experiences in my life who I came up with the idea of Cobalt. And I had an absolute clear vision that I wanted to take the music industry into the digital age. Right. And to address those issues is that, uh, number one, that you needed big tech, big data. You needed a centralized uh, platform to run all those billions of transactions for um, for the digital uh, global uh, monetization. Number two, we are a service provider because, and that's solving the agency problem. We right. don't owe rights. We are here to maximize uh, the cash flow for uh, our clients, our creators. And the third thing, which I'm very proud of, is I, from day one, I said that we both need to be a music company and a technology company. So I'm very proud that we have merged those two cultures uh, right. in, in, in Cobalt. And, and so how much, let's talk money. How much money is out there? What are the opportunities that are out there? It's, you know, Cobalt was designed for this moment. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited of where we are. That, first of all, there is $8 billion now out there in the digital pipes, and, but the billions of dollars are getting lost right. currently. There are 75, 80% uh, transactional costs in the global industry, and the pipes are leaking. Our platform is fixing uh, that now, but the opportunity uh, going forward is uh, today, we had 90% piracy in Scandinavia. I come from Sweden, if you're not that right. obvious for people. Used uh, to have 90% piracy. Today yeah. is 4%. Right. And you had the same thing in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, a lot of the emerging markets. Today, Cobot has built an end-to-end. -end. We have a global digital society called AMRA. So that means we can take in the global usage files from Spotify, Apple, or YouTube, and monetize centrally, globally. Right. So, from my point of view, we are coming that if we don't triple the industry in five years, going to $50 billion industry, uh, I would be disappointed uh, in that. To be clear, what you're saying is, so the current global music market uh, uh, for, the, for the record business, yes. for sales basically, is 15 billion. Yes. And you think it can get to like 50 billion yes. in five years? Absolutely. So, 
you know, let's, you like numbers, I like data, I like numbers. Say that this quarter, if we take the top three on the subscription basis, Spotify, Apple, and Amazon, which I think is the elephant in the room here, uh, I see that I would be surprised if they don't come to 100 million subscriptions this quarter. So you just need to go to 400, growing by 20% per annum, and monetizing a billion people. And then if you start to add, you know, what is Tencent going to do, Sony in India, and on a global level. So you don't need to believe in so much, because the beauty, you know, you love music, I love music, the access that you have through those pipes are amazing. And now, for the first time, we can match 100% invoice, collect. And, you know, I was thinking, a lot of people, when you talk to people from the outside, they don't really understand how bad it was from the beginning. Right. So, um, historically, you know, it took you two, three years and you had a print out of paper. You, so today, what Cobalt is delivering is 40% uplift and your global real time on your phone. Right. So the efficiency combined with the transactional costs will drive uh, what we have said from the beginning that transparency really drives liquidity and driving volume and growing the whole industry. So the transformation is really happening now. Okay, so you're, this growth, let's say this growth does happen. We get to a $50 billion um, music business globally in five years. On the master side. Uh, right, on, on the master side. Combined $100 billion, I think, on publishing live right. and all the other VR, augmented reality, and all other stuff that will happen. So that has big implications for, uh, well, for a lot of folks, but let's say two significant groups. There's the artists and songwriters, etc. And there's the labels. Yes. So what is, what is kind of in it for each of them? What, is it, what are the implications first for established artists versus indie artists? Let's stick that. So um, um, today we have around 5,000 bands that has a commercial uh, living of music. Right. It's, I am what we believe that when you efficiently monetize a billion people, with your low transactional costs and having an efficient social media networking that we're going to have 100,000 band who has a great commercial living. Because Cobalt and the pipes we worked, you know, we have 5,000 interfaces out in the world. The money we are pumping down and creating, you are, you are creating this positive circle. Right. Today this positive circle that more great music is created, coming out there, more people consume. Right. And that is what you call a commercial market. Right. And there's never been a great, low transactional, high liquidity commercial music market in, in the world. So, and what about the long tail issue of, you know, the, of course it's easy to get your music out in the world, in the ether in general, yeah. but very hard to be discovered in, when you're in the middle of the long tail, right? I mean, many millions of songs that never get you know, even listened to once, right? So, um, historically, it has always been difficult to break. You know, uh, everyone who has been touring in a band say that you need to tour two years to get 10,000 fans. Right. Today, you actually can reach that in three to six months if you're working efficiently, etc. So, I see all the great tech investments, we have heard a couple of things here today, uh, what Ticketmaster is working on, or DICE, or mobile, uh, music glue, or everything in that. Right. Uh, but, the, but the trick is, if you can monetize those people without 90 or 100% transactional cost uh, disappearing, you actually get the system to work. And uh, that's what we are working on, the global end-to-end -end ecosystem for the songwriters and artists and pushing that through. So, um, so this is a true, and this is important, it's an important message that it's a true win-win-win. Right. It's a true win for the DSPs, it's a true win for the people who have rights or rights owners of the catalogs. And most of all, the people who have been suffered most through 50 years, the creators, 
who actually have global, real-time, transparent cash flows uh, and a service when they need when they need it. And to be clear, they can see where they're down, where people are streaming, yeah. right? What markets? So, in, in rel relevant to what you're talking about with efficiency in touring. Uh, in building your fan base. Yeah, so you can see where you're popular, where you're growing in popularity. The tools that start now to come, we, we launched our own uh, AVOL app, Artists Without a Label, right. a couple of months ago. And the response has been fantastic. So you can see what city is my fans, what is the trend, right. what should I do. Uh, the insights, we are running a lot of algorithms that, you know, you have a... Uh, you have, your uh, female 13 to 17 in Denmark is zero while you are huge in Sweden on that part. How am I going to uh, match that? So uh, there will be a lot of new cool stuff that will come out. How you then push cash or marketing or uh, how do you manage your playlist on a global level and right. matching that into your own social media. You know, grandma, I'm on Mexican playlist today. So, so that's quite fun. Okay, and on the label side, how do you think their mindset should be affected by this, let's say this optimism of, about the market size? I mean, what should be they, what sh how should their behavior change? Uh, their attitude towards, it, towards the streaming you know, services? It's, yeah. it, it's quite clear that there has been some resistance towards change. And uh, I think it was even last summer, you know, m major executives said that streaming is deaf. Right, death to the to the music industry. Yeah, and um, I've said from day one that this is the biggest opportunity we have of actually monetizing and reaching and deep. So uh, they who has very deep catalogs, uh, the value of rights will go up dramatically. And why I'm extra excited is that because I saw even this announcement for a couple of weeks ago, what they thought about Universal, it seems that the knowledge, because the facts start to be there. You mean about the value of Universal, right? Yeah. That, yeah. I mean... Uh, Why don't you share that with... I don't think the uh, audience probably is too no. familiar, but... So, uh, so uh, this is a golden age of music, and right. what Cobot is putting in there, uh, pushing for this, and pushing for transparency, and showing that this is how you're growing and lifting everything really starts to come through uh, everywhere. And, you know, today we are taking care of 600 music publishers and a lot of labels. So Cobalt starts to become more and more of an industry platform in that. So I'm quite excited. And when I started Cobalt, people say, Willard, you're an idiot. You don't right. understand the magic box right. of music, quote. And uh, so I'm happy for creators. I'm happy for the industry. And obviously, I'm happy that Cobot is uh, steaming ahead. Today, you know, when I spoke at Web Summit in Dublin, we had 200 people. Today, we have 500. And uh, we continue with that growth rate uh, in Cobot. Just to take the devil's advocate view on Spotify, this is kind of one where I want to get more about the label's attitude towards the streaming industry. This if streaming is where the growth is in the industry, and that's quite clear that that's the case, um, Spotify's cost structure right now still means that they lose money. Uh, they, uh, we were talking earlier, I mean, the, the royalties add up to about, let's say 70% or maybe a little less um, of, every, uh, of every song doll, of every buck they get in. Uh, but the actual payout is much higher, like 83% of the revenue that they get in. Uh, what has to change in how the labels are talking to the... I mean, right now, of course, they're doing new deals. They're st they still, of course, want to get as much of every dollar as they can, but what has to change? You know, from my view, uh, I think that as an... Obs uh, to comment... I should not comment on other people's sure. negotiations, but I think it's an absolutely clear that Spotify starts to get their payments uh, managed. I think you're down to 70% again now. Number two, more importantly, for the first time, I think the owners of the majors start to realize that this is a great thing. I have no problem Spotify making money, being successful, being very valuable. Because if they are very successful, the industry will be even more successful because driving the value. Right. So 
from day one, I have supported uh, them and uh, they have created a fantastic interface. But I'm also excited about the video platforms, what they will continue to push, with, which is a great promotion tool. So we need, right. to, we need to sort a safe harbor argument. We need to sort to how do we monetize video, but in VR and different, I think that will be excited. And, and in this, uh, you know, we, we mentioned the elephant in the room, I think is Alexa. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon. So um, when I talked about market growing, uh, what Alexa is creating, historically, music industry has been a little bit unsophisticated when it comes to market segmentation. It's been $15 your CD. Right. Compare that with the airline industry has 250 different gene classes for one seat. So the opportunity to segment the market and the voice commands, for example, I think everyone who has kids or stuff, how you are, uh, you know, the friction you are lowering to start to list, enjoy music. Right. So uh, with our distribution power, the access to music by voice command, I think will create another layer of uh, a market uh, to this. And then, you know, I have artists down in Magic Leap, the augmented reality, right. I think, would be exciting. Uh, what, uh, how we can enjoy uh, live gigs. You, you know that's better than me. You have tested all this stuff. So the opportunity to monetize music, to explore music, to enjoy music. And if we, at the same time, then pumping cash back. So um, one of my best stories I had, Gaddy, was I play, I love jazz. We take right. care of Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, Miles Davis, and was one uh, jazz musician who had $2,000 per six month statement. He signed up to Cobalt, and they usually have very complex, 200 live albums, complex collection, but right. small amounts. Right. Our first quarterly statement to him was $30,000. So he called me up and said, Willard, I have a small girl. I was going to stop playing. Now I can continue. And that is one of those moments when you say, yeah, we are on a mission. And huh. I love to go and see him playing. So this is, you know, it's not just supporting uh, the biggest, if we take care of Paul McCartney or Max Martin or Dave Grohl, etc., which is fantastic and fantastic music. But when you talk about the long tail, yeah. you know, there's a lot of great music in that long tail. Uh, and all the enjoyment, as we have seen in New Orleans, every club, every place. So. Uh, so there you have it, five year, 50 billion, 100. 100,000 100, bands making a living instead of 5,000. And, uh, and well, uh, global monetizing, transparent, real time uh, of the music. Well, there you have it, an, a, an optimistic vision of the future. Um, I hope we get there in five years. Uh, Willard, thank you so much to, to be in conversation thank with us here. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for being here.